Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today I have something really cool to show you. This is a redstone cache. And what a cache is, is it's a sort of memory optimization. Let's say I have this really big, huge memory system that has just hundreds of thousands of bytes. Well, maybe not that much, but it's big and slow, basically. The problem with that is just working with memory is going to take a really long time. So what the cache does is it will store some of that memory, the ones you're working with, basically in a faster memory system. So I can quickly work with saving and loading in the, the faster system. And then when I'm done with that and I want to work with a different part of memory, the cache will unload right back to the big slow one and then read some more memory from the big slow memory so that well, I can continue working with that fast speed. And that's the general idea of caching. But what makes this particular design so cool is it automatically adapts the inputs and outputs of the cache system for hex. So I can have this really big hex memory system that stores stuff really compactly, and this will automatically convert the inputs and outputs back to the 8-bit binary system that I need for a computer. And I basically get all that for free. No special anything needed. So let's say I want to save to some memory, and it's in the cache. Let's say I want to save a 3. I'll save that to my first piece of cached memory. If I read it back out, hey, what do you know? I get a 3. If I want to write to another one of my cached memory pieces, say this one over here, I've written a 5, and what do you know? If I read it back out, there's a 5. So as long as what you're working with is in the cache, this works basically like redstone memory that you're used to. The trick is, what happens if I want to fetch a different piece of this theoretical huge memory system? Well, you notice it has an output here in signal strength. And this is actually an encoded version of all of the contents of this cache memory. So the encoded version of the cache memory is traveling along this line, and it will go out to the big memory system. Then I could load in a different part of the big memory system. Let's say, just for sake of example, it's empty. And now, cool, I can load again. Whoops, I do not want to place random blocks. I can load, now I have nothing. I can write to this, I can write, say, 7. So there, and if I load it out, I'll get 7. So now I'm working with a different hypothetical block of memory, just, again, the cache is storing it closer so I can work with it more quickly and easily. So let's say we're done with that, we send it all the way back out to our big giant memory system, and I want to work with the memory I just had, the 5 and the 3 and everything else. Well, I'd load it from the big memory system, it would travel along this bus back in, and I could write it to the cache like this. So now I've loaded that old cache memory. Now if I read from here again, look at that, it's the 3. It's the same stuff I'd stored earlier, just, well, this is just a nice way of making it local. And I can get it decoded into binary and back to hex for free, and that is awesome. So this is really cool. It acts as a memory performance optimization and an encoder slash decoder all in one, and I love it. Another thing that makes this so cool is it gives you the best of both worlds. You could use a really compact memory system, like my 2x4x7 hex memory I showed off a few videos ago, and you could still get really fast access time. I calculate that if you set up a 256-byte memory system, enough to completely saturate an 8-bit address space, then worst-case cache miss with this cache system is 32 ticks, which really isn't that terrible. And assuming you are thrashing the cache, you have four addresses, so 32 ticks divided by 4 is 8 ticks. So you have really only have 8 ticks of memory delay for this really big, super 
huge memory system, assuming you aren't doing anything horrible with the cache. And that, I think, is really, really awesome. That is an amazing access speed for such a huge memory system. Now, before I go, I'd just like to briefly walk you through how this works. The thing in the middle is probably the easiest component to understand. Everything from here to here. Because this is just a typical register system like you've all probably already seen if you've seen redstone memory. So input goes in here, there's a repeater lock that saves it, and it goes through this slightly interesting bit of logic I'll talk about in a moment, and ultimately outputs here, which is being controlled with a comparator. What this bit of logic does is if a 1 is saved and you're not reading, this will output a signal strength of 1. And that's just enough to reach this encoder over here, but not go out as a full read over here. So it's enough to get to the encoder, but not interfere and create a false output. And that's why it does that. So this part over here is where the output goes to memory. Anything that's 1 will have a signal strength of 1 here. And this is an encoder. This encodes a binary input into hex. So it goes through here, and now you have signal strength encoded output, just like that. And presumably over here, you have a signal strength, well, decoder. It takes a signal strength input and decodes it into binary. And again, you have a sort of a signal strength trick here because the output is only a signal strength of 2, the binary output is signal strength of 2. So that's enough to, again, reach this register so I could write the decoded hex memory here, but not enough to travel along and interfere with any of the other bits. So that's the general whirlwind tour of how this works. I realize it's not an in-depth explanation, but yeah, that's the basic idea. And this, I'm really showing you this because it's an awesome design. I love this. And there's a good chance you'll see some of this when my uh, current redstone computer system. Oh, and one more thing that's really awesome about this. The cache line itself, insanely fast. If you count going through here, it's one, two, three ticks to go through the cache line. So it's really, with some clever busing, this is fast enough to read from cache memory just as fast as the register system. And that is awesome. But yeah, that's all I wanted to share with you in this video. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I'll see you next time. Till then.